Warning, I'm about to blow your mind. When making decisions with your data in C, you basically have two options for the majority of the control flow in your program, switch statements and if statements. Now, a lot of new programmers struggle with which one should they use. And what if I told you switch statements are actually significantly faster than if statements. In this video, we're gonna talk about how that works under the hood, why switch is actually faster than if statements in most of the cases, and if this all really matters. Let's dive into it. Let's say, for example, we're writing a program and we wanna have a basic option menu where we iterate through a series of options that the user can give us, and then we have to parse through which option did they give us and then take the appropriate action. So for example, maybe we have the stop command that says to stop the menu and quit the program. So we use Q for the quit, C for continue just means cycle the menu again, and maybe we make a new object for our program. Maybe we're making a database program. We do edit, we do delete. You know, these are the various options we can add. And obviously we're using an enum because using an enum allows us to use the word stop instead of the actual character. The character can be thought of as like a magic value where if maybe we want to translate this program to another language where Q doesn't mean quit, we can still use the keyword stop and instead make a separate enum for that language and change this maybe to like Z or something. We have two primary options for the control control flow of this program to run this menu and figure out what action do we take based on user input. In our code, we are going to need to create a buffer for the option that the user gives us. And then we have to do some logic on the first character of that buffer, right? And I'm creating four characters of buffer space just because maybe the user has a Unicode's character set that has multiple values per character. Maybe we have multiple control characters like slash R slash N in Windows or just slash N for the enter key. So we're making a lot of room for effectively what ends up being one character. And then we have to do some logic on that one character and figure out what do we have to do and then take some appropriate action. There are two ways we can do this. We can do this with the if else tree as you're seeing here, or we can do it with the switch statement. And I think a lot of new programmers really struggle with, you know, when do I do one or the other? When is the most appropriate? So here there's actually a significant difference in the way the program will process this code. So when you do an if statement, basically you have the if statement here and you have some condition you have to meet. And we're saying here, if the first value in the option buffer is equal to stop, we do the stop action, same with continue, etc. When we say if, if this condition gets met, we will run the code here and the rest of these evaluations will not happen. We will not check to see if option buff zero is equal to continue because we met this first one. But if for example, none of these are true, so it does not equal stop, it does not equal continue, it does not equal new, et cetera, it'll run all four of these evaluations here before we get down to the final evaluation to see if it equals delete. We've run the number of instructions it takes to compare all these values before we get to delete. And in certain cases, maybe you're running on an embedded device that has really no room for errors in terms of missed caches, or maybe you just need the program to run quickly. You are wasting a lot of cycles by going through this entire list. Now, how does this compare to the switch statement? So let's say, for example, I have a switch statement here, and I say that if the case new happens, we print F, you said new, and then we move on with our day, and then we do a break statement. So let's kind of talk about the syntax of a switch statement. So a switch statement here, we give it the option buffer zero. It has to take a literal as inputs. At this time, the option buffer value of zero is a literal value, meaning it's just like a character, it's a number. And we're saying in the case that the value is new, we say you said new. In the case the value is stop, continue, or something else we have not defined in the statement to break. And all break means is we go back and we leave the switch statement. And then because we say while our option is not equal to stop, this loop will continue forever. The reason why this is faster is actually a really, really neat performance optimization that goes on under the hood in a switch statement versus an if else statement. Before we keep going, I want to get serious for a second. I know a lot of you here may be new programmers. Maybe you've written literally zero lines of code. Maybe you're in college trying to learn about computer science. If you're looking for a free and easy way to learn about computer science, data science, and machine learning, then I highly recommend Brilliant.org. Brilliant.org is an easy way to learn about all these topics and their lessons are interactive. Brilliant is written in a way where you use the knowledge as you go through the system. You learn as you go and you get to test yourself on that knowledge. The lessons in Brilliant are bite-sized. So if you only have time in between classes to learn something, you can take a 10 minute class on Brilliant and then move on with your day. Now to support the channel, you can go and use my link right now, www.brilliant.org slash low level learning for 30 days free and 20% off an annual subscription when you sign up. Thanks again, Brilliant, for sponsoring this video.
Now, let's talk about what's going on under the hood when we execute the if version of this versus the switch statement version of this and why switch is actually a lot faster. I've added a little bit of code for the program to execute when option is evaluated. If it equals stop, we go to stop. If it equals continue, we go to continue, et cetera. And all those functions, all they do is they print the thing we said. And obviously in our code, we could actually handle that stuff later on in the program. And then in switcheroo, I've done effectively the same thing, but instead of using the if else tree, I've converted it to a switch statement where we switch on the enum of the case, and then we handle the option accordingly. Now we're gonna go look at the if aru, the, the if tree version, and I wanna show you under the hood what's actually happening in assembly. Now, don't be afraid. Assembly isn't that bad. It looks a little scary, but I can actually explain to you what's going on here pretty quickly. We run our call to scanf right here, which actually gets the input from the user what we're doing is we're comparing EAX. What we're doing is we're moving and zero extending the byte pointer at this location into EAX. All that means is we're grabbing the first byte of our input and putting it into EAX, which is a four byte register in the CPU. We are then gonna compare AL to this value, hex 71. And interesting, what is hex 71? Hex 71 is Q. What is Q? Q is our quit option. So the code is going through and it's saying, if these are not equal, go to 1245. What's at 1245? Well, we move that byte again and we compare it to 63. What is 63? It's C, our continue option. So here in the if a -roo code, you are seeing that if else tree get worked out. It's just a series of jump not equals and then compares, jump not equals and then compares. And again, like I said before, if you're at the bottom of that tree, if you're the last option, then effectively we have to run through all these instructions, all of these very, very long branch instructions that may invoke a cache miss on your computer to get to that option. Now you could code your program in a way so that the least likely option is at the bottom, but a lot of instances of this don't play out like that. Maybe you need, maybe all of these happen at the same occurrence, but you're gonna miss out on all this performance here. Now, how does that differ from the switch a root state? Again, like I said, there's a little bit of magic going on under the hood that makes it a little bit faster. So same thing as before, we are gonna run our call to scanf. We are going to pull out our value into EAX. This is the lower first byte of our input, but then we do something pretty weird. We sign extend it, don't worry about that, but then we subtract 63 in hex from our value and we compare it to hex E. So now we have this really, really tiny number, just a number that's up to 15. And then if we are below that, so this is jump above, if we're below hex E, what it does is it loads some magic value into RDX. You may just see a bunch of garbage, a bunch of Fs and 42s, but I see something pretty magic. The jump table begins at this location here, hex 2054. And because these numbers are packed little endian, they're actually in reverse. So the number actually is FF, FF, F242. Now that is a negative number. We can tell that because the first bit is set and that number actually translates into this number here. Now, warning, I'm about to blow your mind. This number here that we saw in our jump table, hex FF, FF, F242 is a very large number that is actually a negative number. To convert that big number to its negative representation, we go hex FF, FF, FFFF, the max size 32 bits can represent, and we convert that by subtracting it and then adding one to its value. So this is actually a negative hex DBE. Now what's going on here is the program takes the address of that jump table, so 2054, and then it adds that value we've pulled from the jump table and then it jumps to that, we jump RAX. So we go to the value of the jump table and we go to the address of the jump table, we subtract one from the other, and then we jump to it. We can do that math calculation here and we see that the address is hex 1296 because we take the address of the jump table and subtract the value in the jump table, which we got from our previous math calculation here. And guess what hex 1296 is? Hex 1296 is one of the entries in our jump table. It is the value of the address of the option where we run handle continue. 
How fucking cool is that, dude? The computer decided, no, we're not going to do if statements. We're going to do a switch statement by doing some magical value math. We will use our input from the user as an index into a table of negative numbers. We will subtract that number from the address of that table and boom, just go to that location. It's exactly where you want it to go. There is no comparison going on. Effectively, this is O of N time and this is constant time. Obviously, there's a little bigger of a constant having to set all this up and you know, most of the time, if you only have a couple of statements here, like maybe we have two or three options here versus our if statement, if we only have two or three options here, the performance difference is going to be extremely negligible. But if we're getting into a scenario where we have maybe 10 or 20 options that we have to run through, you will see a significant performance increase in the switch statement because we're not going to have to process all of these dead cases in the event that these are likely to happen at the same probability. How cool is that? Computers are amazing, assembly isn't hard. If you like this video, go watch this other video and figure out why void star pointers even exist. Because honestly, I'm not that 